My name is Terry Shepard, and I will be your guide into the world of close quarter battle. I'm a current U.S. Army Green Beret, and I have fought in two armed conflicts in the Middle East. Initially, I was trained to fight in the European theater to protect the U.S. and its Western allies from the Soviet Union during the heart of a Cold War. As a Green Beret, I had to learn an Eastern Bloc language and be prepared to infiltrate behind enemy lines to link up with, train, and fight alongside partisans to defeat the Red Army in their very own backyard. In other words, I had to be really good at guerrilla warfare. Although the Cold War is technically over, we now face a new global conflict, terrorism. To combat this threat, I've got to be an expert in the techniques of close quarter battle. Together, we'll explore how elite soldiers and police units use these specific techniques, weapons and technologies to defeat their enemies at very close range. The term close quarter battle is used to describe scenarios that police and military face in both urban and rural environments. Although the origin of close quarter battle goes back to sword fighting and hand-to-hand -hand combat, today it's used primarily to describe the techniques when small teams are confronting an enemy inside a building or within a compound. Stairwells, hallways, and rooms always pose dangerous and unknown variables. From basic muzzle awareness, weapons transitions, to silent team communication, all police and military units need to be as good as they can possibly be at close quarter battle. In today's episode, we will take a look at the U.S. Army's Delta Force and how they are deployed in counter-terror activities and larger battlefield operations the world over. Specifically today, we will look at the daring rescue of Kurt Muse from a Panama prison during the operation Just Cause. Then we will look at how fast roping has changed the way special operators get into and out of the battle space. We will go into the head of a member of a U.S. Army Delta Force team. Finally, we have a look at some of the equipment used during Delta Force operations, such as the M4, the MP5, and night vision optics. In the 70s, Colonel Beckwith, a U.S. Army Special Forces officer, realized that the U.S. was vulnerable. We didn't have a national asset to deal with the terrorist threat. He decided to solve that problem. He went to England, trained with the SAS, went through their selection process, and figured out how to organize that for the US. He basically modeled it and brought it back to us. Delta Force became reality. They're now called CAG, Combat Applications Group. CAG and SEAL Team 6 are our national force to deal with any incoming terrorist threat. All throughout this conflict, they have continued to hone and refine the art of CQB, and every unit in the United States, whether it's a police unit or a special forces unit, has benefited directly from what they do. In 1989, in Panama City, Panama, American Kurt Muse was imprisoned for setting up anti-Noriega regime radio stations. Now, the State Department had a plan to get him out, which they gave to Delta Force, but it was postponed several times because of political considerations, until they decided to do it jointly with Operation Just Cause, the removal of Manuel Noriega from power. In order to be successful, the Delta guys knew they had to get in quickly, eliminate any threat to Kurt Muse, and get him back to friendly forces. This was a classic CQB mission. They came in directly through the roof, cleared the building to where Kurt Muse was, brought directly to the roof to be lifted out by helicopters, which came exactly when they were supposed to. But as all of us in the military know, even our best plans don't always go the way we want them to. So the rescue team had Kurt Muse in their hands, but it wasn't over yet. On the way back to friendly forces, the helicopter carrying Muse crashed. He was uninjured, but several of the operators were. So now the team found themselves in the unenviable position of having to get out from enemy lines with injured men among them. But they were adaptive. They were able to signal an aircraft overhead that was able to call an armored unit that came and rescued them. For every CQB mission, we know that something is gonna go wrong. It always does and it always will. So our plans have to try to account for all those contingencies. You can't plan for everything. And at the end of the day, you have to do what they did. Roll with it and do the best you can. Now, let's have a look at how the actual Delta Force mission played out.
During Operation Acid Gambit, night vision optics were used by all branches of the military, from helicopter pilots all the way to the Delta Force team on the ground. This provided the operators a crucial advantage over their opponents. Night vision and thermal vision are two different things. Night vision refers to sensitive optics that can pick up extremely low level ambient light and increase its visibility. Thermal imagery are optics that actually see and reveal heat signature. In this way, they can essentially see human bodies and vehicles very clearly from long distances during darkness. Delta Force was the first to really utilize this weapon and explore that utility in close quarter battle situations. During Operation Acid Gambit, Delta Force was equipped with M4 assault rifles and MP5 submachine guns. Let's have a closer look at the M4 rifle. So this is the M4A1 carbine. You can see already it's a much shorter weapon. It's got an extendable stock. It can be very close, medium, or a little bit further, however you like to use this. Same uh, iron sights, 30 round magazine, all of that's the same. You see on here a suppressor. A suppressor is not a silencer. Guns are not silent. It takes the high frequency sound of the round away so that far away, people don't know you're there and, and the sound gets diluted. This is a great weapon for uh, paratroopers and special ops guys. It goes everywhere. It's really short, easy to transport in vehicles and much better to conceal. Really good weapon, very light, very simple. You can pull it in really tight or extend it out if you really want to take a longer, maybe more accurate shot. Very compact, great for airborne and special operations units. In order for operators to retain the element of surprise and speed, they often have to descend from a helicopter. Operation Acid Gambit was a nighttime helicopter insertion operation. When Delta Force units are using helicopter insertions, they have to be prepared to use rope propelling methods to descend. There are two primary roping methods used by special forces. The first one is rappelling which was used during Operation Acid Gambit. When rappelling, the operator uses a harness, a thin rope, and has a braking system carabiners attached to his harness. All the operator has to do when he wants his descent to stop is to squeeze the rope in his lower hand and he will come to an immediate halt. The second way of descending into a battle zone is fast roping. Here, operators grab onto a thicker rope and use their gloved hands and feet as their braking system. Police force, and today they're training in air operations. CQB demands that you be ready to get into a target any way you can. Coming up, I will be fast roping with an elite anti-terror police unit. And we will also look at HRST, known as helicopter rope suspension technique. CQB, or close quarter battle, is the term used by elite military and police for the techniques used in close battle situations, from built up urban areas to more rural compounds. We are looking at how special forces like the U.S. Army's Delta Force use close quarter battle techniques to stay alive in highly dangerous military operations. Though I am somewhere in the Czech Republic at the Urna training compound. Urna stands for Utvar Rijejo Nasazani. 
This is the Rapid Response National Police Force of the Czech Republic, a really elite unit. Today, I am practicing my fast roping with them. So before you can jump into any high-risk operation like fast roping from a helicopter, you've got to kind of start slow. We call it the crawl, walk, run principle. So we're going to start from a static tower, get a few dry runs in, then we're going to go ahead and move to the aircraft, which, of course, adds a lot more risk and danger. Should put up in? Go. to helicopter now. The issue of rappelling is that the operator's equipment and clothing is hindered when lowering himself. Also, after the descent, the operator must detach himself from the harness before he can go into battle. With the invention of fast roping, operators are now able to descend faster and unhindered by equipment, even though it is more dangerous not being attached to a roping system. The rope must be thick, at least 40 millimeters, in order to not be jerked around by the movements of the helicopter. After my helicopter run, I head downrange with a firearms instructor to look at the H&K MP5 SD. The Heckler & Koch MP5 submachine gun family has many sizes and calibers. Today, I am firing the 9mm suppressed version, similar to the type Delta Force used during Acid Gambit. All right, so we're at the Urna Training Complex. They're some of the best shooters in the world. I have one of their firearms instructors, so he's going to take me through some of the weapons. This is the SD-6 with uh, integrated silencer. So the suppressor is actually built into the weapon. Yeah. And you see, it does, you don't remove it. It's all it's part of the system. Oh, we okay. can't remove it. Yeah, it's built in. How have you any issues with the performance of that with regard to you know cleaning or, or malfunctions or anything like that? Uh, we don't have uh, special malfunctions uh, okay. with this weapon, but you have to clean it a little more. There, it's, well, it's gonna, yeah, because of the suppressor, it's gonna get dirtier. Yes. The, more, the gas exactly. doesn't get out as much. I see. That's right. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. that. I like the way that feels. Nice balance. Nice easy hit. Come up. Gotcha. Nice man. Cool. All right.
Coming up, we go inside the head of a U.S. Delta Force team as they rescue American Kurt Muse. And we will analyze Operation Acid Gambit. CQB, or close quarter battle, is the term used by elite military and police for the techniques used in close battle situations, from built up urban areas to more rural compounds. Now let's go into the head of a member of this Delta Force team as they assault the Carcel Modelo prison in Panama City to rescue Kurt Muse and be exfilled by MH6 Little Birds. Once inside the prison, the use of night vision goggles enabled the Delta Force team to move with speed, precision, and stealth, even in the darkness of the building, while the guards were actually taken by surprise and acted confused and uncoordinated. Using explosives, they breached the door to his cell and eliminated the guard inside. Giving him a protective vest and goggles, they take Muse to the roof for extraction. This is a prime example of how the element of surprise, combined with speed and violence of action, can guarantee the success of a CQB mission. Let's take another look at helicopter roping techniques. This time, we're looking at HRST, or helicopter rope suspension technique, which is used to extract ground forces without the helicopter actually having to touch down. This system of HRST requires each operator to wear a harness system, which attaches to different points on the extraction rope and is lowered from the bottom of the chopper. What these guys are gonna do is basically attach themselves to kind of what we call the army's spy ring, something like that, they're gonna drop a rope. These guys all have lines. They're gonna attach themselves to the rope. This system uses a long, thick rope with several attachment points at the bottom section. Operators attach themselves with their personal harnesses to the rope, and once it's signaled to the pilot that everyone's ready, the helicopter can begin to take off, with all operators suspended from the bottom of the aircraft as it ascends into the sky. Now let's dissect Operation Acid Gambit, the Delta Force prison rescue of Kurt Muse. Delta operators are inserted onto the roof of the Carcel Modelo prison by MH6 Little Bird helicopters. After breaching the rooftop door, the Delta operators race down the two flights of stairs toward Muse's floor. They eliminate guards as they move through the prison. Muse's cell door is breached with explosives and the team enters. 
Delta operators give Muse body armor, a ballistic helmet and goggles, and extract them to the roof, where they are exfiltrated back to the U.S. base. Coming up, we take a look at the conclusion to the U.S. Delta Force prison rescue of Kurt Muse. Close Quarter Battle, or CQB, describes the challenges faced by special forces and police when engaging an enemy inside a building with hallways and rooms. Today we are looking at the U.S. Delta Force during Operation Just Cause, where they rescued American civilian Kurt Muse from a prison. As we revisit Operation Acid Gambit, we can now better understand how the different elements, tactics, and methods of CQB were being used by the Delta Force team. To gain surprise, they arrived by helicopter, used night vision goggles, and moved stealthily until they encountered the first prison guard. When encountering prison guards, the Delta Force team used overwhelming firepower to gain control over the battle space. Their precious cargo now secure, Delta called in for extraction. During this phase, the Hughes MH6 Littlebird transporting Muse crashed. Several Delta Force operators were wounded, while Muse, two other operators, and the two pilots were uninjured. Today we learned about how U.S. Delta Force has used close quarter battle training and helicopter insertion into the battle space to help maintain the three rules of surprise, speed, and violence of action. Thank you.